Hello, Howie Bentley here. I'm the founder, guitarist, and songwriter for Cauldron Born and also the doom metal band Britain Rights. When Metal Mike um, initially invited me to do this video about four inspiring albums, I had to think about it for a bit um, because I've been into heavy metal since 1981. And there's a lot of heavy metal I like. So I had to narrow, narrow it down with some parameters. And um, I came to the conclusion doom metal would be a good thing to talk about because it's um, Halloween season now. And I usually get in the doom metal mood this time of year, reading um, gothic horror fiction and uh, listening to some of my favorite doom metal albums, uh, which initially inspired me to um, form Britain Rights. Um, so... I'll go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, four albums here. We'll um, start off with um, this one right here. This is uh, Black Sabbath Live at Last. And oddly enough, this was not an official release by the band. Um, it was released by a label in Ireland. I think it was NEMS. Um, I don't even see it on here. This may be a bootleg of a bootleg. But um, this thing turned up in all the stores back in the 80s. So I uh, first grabbed it on vinyl. And um, one of the reasons I like this album so much is um, Tony Iommi, the, the band's tuned down uh, a minor third, which is a step and a half on the guitar. It gives us this really heavy sound, even to um, classics, you know, I'm inclined to be a bit tired of from teaching guitar for 30 plus years. Uh, classics like um, War Pigs and Paranoid, but it makes those sound refreshing every time I hear them because of the way it's tuned. Those were tuned standard or roughly so when they recorded the Paranoid album, but it has a great, um, great set list on here with uh, Tomorrow's Dream, Sweet Leaf, Killing Yourself to Live, uh, Cornucopia, Snowblind, Children of the Grave, War Pigs, Wicked World, which gets a little a bit too jammy. That's my only complaint about the album, but still, I really like the song. And, um, and Paranoid, of course, is the closer. But, um, and the feedback before some of the songs, the feedback just comes whistling in. And um, it sounds really great. It's just a really great live album. It's, it's heavy and such a great guitar tone for a live album. So my second one, these aren't in any particular order. Even though Black Sabbath is my favorite band of all time, um, the Aussie era, and I love the Aussie era, but it's not my favorite um, era. But for doom metal, it's one of my top, you know, it would be my top. Um, so here is a band um, from what I understand, they're from close to where Black Sabbath was from. Um, this Witchfinder General. Um, this is my favorite album by them. Of course, I love the other album they did too, and the, and the live stuff that was uh, released later on. But uh, Death Penalty by Witchfinder General. Um, this is hard to beat. It would be in my top 10, maybe top five albums of all time. Um, I liken it to Venom's Black Metal. Every song on it is a hit with me. And um, I, I would say um, Free Country is one of the best. The main riff in that is one of the best heavy metal riffs ever written. Phil Cope could come up with some of the, the greatest riffs of all time in, in metal music. Um, I love every song on this, and um, this is a very influential album to me, very inspiring, and I could just listen to it over and over and not get tired of it. I picked it up. You know, I keep talking about vinyl, like that's some badge of credibility, but um, picked it up on vinyl, a blue vinyl, in, um, in the early 80s. I guess it was around 82 or so. Around the same time I, I picked up Venom's Black Metal album. And um, I, I just think this album is uh, just utterly fantastic. And I really like that cover on there, by the way. Um, I think the, the model on here posed for uh, Playboy or Penthouse. Okay, so the next album I'd like to talk about is Trouble. Self-titled from 1990. And um, this is um, probably the best, I mean, to me, it's the best American doom metal album of all time. Let's see if we can hold up somewhere where the glare is not on it. 
there. But uh, yeah, um, just great song list. Now, I like Psalm 9 a lot and also The Skull. Uh, those are favorite albums of mine as well. But this album, I think the songwriting is a lot tighter on it. And um, just, just every song on it's great. My favorite song from this album is, um, of course, Black Shapes of Doom. But it also has um, uh, The End of My Days, which is a great riff. The Wolf, Psychotic Reaction. And that's how I found this album was, or found out about this band, was I was watching um, Headbangers Ball back in... I guess 89, uh, but I was watching Headbangers Ball back in 89 and they played the video. There was a music video for Psychotic Reaction. I was like, damn, that sounds like Sabbath, but a little bit different. They, this band has their own uh, spin on that style of music. I didn't even know, we didn't even have doom metal back then. I don't think anyone referred to it as doom metal. It was like a Black Sabbath inspired band um, referring to the early um, Black Sabbath with Ozzy. But, uh, and if, Eric Wagner is just a fantastic vocalist. Um, so and and great guitar harmonies on the album, and um, and and good, really well phrased guitar solos. Uh, and like I said, the writing is just so tight on this album, more so even than on the Skull and Psalm Nine. But um, yeah, you can't beat um, Trouble, self titled. Okay, so I mentioned a few minutes ago that um it being halloween season that i'm really inspired to write doom metal or listen to doom metal and also write doom metal and um i'm not real fond of a lot of traditional metal albums other than the ones i mentioned uh, i do like some songs here and there i like some songs by cathedral and you know pentagram and some of those bands but I, a whole album doesn't really impress me uh, leave leave a, a big impression on me. So I'm gonna have to talk about um, one of my favorite one of my favorite new metal albums, and um, that's one of my own is uh, this one right here. It's uh, Bread and Rights for Mercala, one of my bands, and um, this was inspired. I was reading uh, Joseph Joseph Sheridan Leifa News. Carmilla, which is a gothic horror uh, tale written in the 1800s, late 1800s. It um, predates Dracula. And I was inspired to start writing some music like that. And um, that's when I formed Breton Wrights, uh, at least for a studio project. So I've been listening to this album again lately, particularly the song I did, I sang on, on this. Um, it's called Karnstein Castle. And uh, the reason I ended up singing it was uh, out of necessity. Um, Phil Swanson, who's just one of the, to me, the greatest doom metal vocalists of all time, um, is the singer for Bretton Wright. But um, he didn't really want to do it because the song was so long and he was doing his own vocal arrangements. I'm used to, with Calder Moore, I'm used to arranging uh, everything. I mean, not arranging, but composing everything. And um, Phil has his own way of doing things, and uh, which really, to me, worked out great, uh, you know. But for this song, it was so long, and uh, there was there were so many lyrics, and he knew that I wanted to keep the lyrics intact, so he didn't want to sing them. So I invited Messiah from Candlemass, and he turned me down. So I decided to sing it myself, which was originally what I was going to do was sing all the songs on. Um, the first Britain Wrights album anyway, when I had the idea to do this Doom project. And then a friend of mine showed me the Hour of 13 debut, and I was very impressed with Phil's uh, singing and his lyric lyric writing as well. But um, so I'm, I'm stuck here with, well, I might find a guest singer to do the song or um, I'm going to have to do it myself. So um, I would originally plan like i said to do the, the vocals myself so i decided the hell i'll sing it and i uh i sang the song and it turned out pretty pretty well i thought and uh, a lot of folks have asked me why don't you do a song on the next britain rights album and every time i'm getting ready to do a britain rights album I was like, why don't you do one song uh, really liked your vocals on karnstein castle so this has inspired me here of late to uh, do another doom project aside from Britain Rights, 
um, with me singing on it. And of course, I'm doing everything but the drums, uh, singing and uh, guitar and bass. And I've been writing some stuff for that. So it's very inspirational, uh, this, this album. And um, I'm hopefully going to record some stuff this year for this other project I've been writing for. Um, that is, uh, is a doom metal band, but with me doing vocals on it. So, uh, the Britain Wrights album for Miracala. Miracala is an anagram of Carmela, and Carmela, like I said, was the story written by Joseph Sheridan Lefanu, an Irishman, also. Bram Stoker was er, an Irishman as well, and he influenced, um, Stoker somewhat in his writing with Dracula. So um, those are my four uh, favorite, or I wouldn't say favorite. But yeah, they're, they're favorites, but they're very inspirational doom metal bands to me, uh, or doom metal albums. And uh, that would be Black Sabbath, Live at Last. And we have Witchfire General, one of the greatest metal albums ever recorded, uh, Death Penalty. And we have Trouble, greatest American death metal band of all time, and their best album. And we have Britain Wright's For Miracala. And by the way, For Miracala has been um, reissued on vinyl. Uh, originally, High Roller Records put out uh, For Miracala with this cover right here. But you know, I never was that crazy about this cover. So we have a new cover coming out and they put it out on vinyl. Um, Sun and Moon Records in Romania. And uh, that is out now. So um, you want to grab a copy of that if you can. I'll have some here. Actually, they're here now. I just haven't listed them. My four inspirational albums in the doom metal genre. And there you have it.